Shalom. Kohalayim la Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. Double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, What is the Voronet? So we're going to go into this historical building. This building was erected around 1488 in a small village called Voronet. And this town of Voronet is in Romania, which is Eastern Europe. Romania is a small country, a relatively small country in Eastern Europe. And Eastern Europe, for those of you that don't know, is one of the last strongholds of Israelites ruling Europe for approximately a thousand years. And we know that the Ottoman Turks took down Constantinople, which is modern-day Istanbul, Turkey, they seized that city and took it down around 1453. However, the Voronet building was erected in 1488 and was one of the last historical buildings that housed several thousand artifacts of the images that remain left over, left over from the Dark Ages. <clears throat> now, this period, the medieval times, that was named the Dark Ages for a thousand years, from approximately 300 to approximately 1300, and going into the 1400s, was called the Dark Ages, because the Israelites ruled Europe. So, we're going to go into some of these images that exist. And as you can see, the building, how it looks on the outside. And it's called Romantic Humor. And you're going to see images <clears throat> of the original prophets. And you're going to see Yahawashai, the 12 disciples. So, we're going to go into some of these images. And then we're going to close out with the key image, which is very prophetic. Let's, let's start here. Let's go to these images first. I'm gonna have to make my screen bigger and we're gonna go into these. So these are some of the remaining images. Most of the images were whitewashed around 1453. When Romans, which are Edomites, began to seize power <clears throat> in Europe and they whitewashed most of the images. But there were hundreds of thousands of dark images verifying the rulership or showing evidence that the Israelites ruled Europe for a thousand years. So these are the prophets. As you can see, all dark-skinned men in the ancient world, the entire geographical complexion of the earth was totally different. Most people during that time were what you would call dark-skinned people today. <clears throat> so these are the prophets holding the biblical scrolls. Let's continue. Here's more images from the Dark Ages, and this term was established by Edomites, <clears throat> calling this period the Dark Ages, when they, the Edomites, were in servitude, serving at the bottom. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 tells us, what has been will be again, and there is nothing new under the sun. So they're going to go back into bondage and captivity. 
And we're going to show you that. It's even in the images here in the Voronet. So there's more images of the prophets, 12 disciples. And our ancestors, of course, knew these things. So the, these images are absolutely amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. <clears throat> and if a lot of these images today, if you were to visit Eastern Europe, have been whited out or bleached. <clears throat> what they would do is they would take and bleach the faces out of these images. And many of these prophets had afros. So they would color in a gold circle around their heads to hide the afros. And then they would whitewash the images out. So that's a very common practice that they would do. Now, we're going to transition to the main image. Let me zoom back out. And this is the main image here in the Voronet, which shows dark-skinned angels with spears. And some of them, you know, they would look at these and refer to them as swords. <coughs> and if you look carefully at the top where my cursor is circling around. Let me back this up so you can see it. There's a dark skin hand with a scale in his hand and he's passing down judgment. So I'm gonna back this up so you can see this. This is absolutely incredible. Dark skin angels that are putting Edomites in captivity. And this image is in Europe, Eastern Europe. Now look where my, my cursor is circling around. That's a big dark skinned hand with a scale where judgment is being given unto the saints. <clears throat> so matter, matter of fact, let's get that. Let's go to uh, Daniel 7. And I think it's 18. <clears throat> One moment. Right here. Daniel 7 and 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. <clears throat> so according to the scriptures, Psalms 148 and 14, the saints are the Hebrew Israelites. So let's go into some more scripture. We're going to go to Daniel 10 and 5. You'll notice the, uh, the big dark skinned hand passing down judgment with the scale in his hand. So judgment is going to be given in favor to the saints. <clears throat> let's go to Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the gold of Uphaz. Verse 10, his body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. So if you look at polished brass, it has a dark hue. When I visited Rome and when I visit very various other places in Europe, if you look at the statues that are outside, they are bronze or brass, which is a dark brown color. <clears throat> and that's brass in its natural state, a dark brown color to medium brown. And 
So this is the Most High being seen by Prophet Daniel in a vision. So he's showing himself in a body. So man, particularly the Israelites or the children of the Most High, the sons of God, Yahweh, are created in his image. Daniel 10 and 6. <clears throat> his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as the lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. And he's got eyes like lamps of fire, just like his son, Yehoshai, described in Revelations chapter 1 and 14 and 15. And that's Revelations chapter 1. Verse 10 and 6, Daniel 10 and 6, his body also like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. So when the Most High makes an appearance, he comes through the chariots, a great fathership, or he can send smaller chariots to appear. And the earth quakes at his presence. Let's go to Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So the so-called Negroes were created in the image of the Father, Yahweh. So we have woolly hair just like he has woolly hair. Or, well, it's more appropriate to say that the other, other way around. Because he has woolly hair, we have woolly hair. Because we were created in his image. <clears throat> Daniel 7 and 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. <clears throat> so he travels on a chariot, a so-called UFO. <clears throat> That's how he's traveling. His son is going to travel in like manner, on a chariot of fire, a so-called UFO. And fire comes out of the bottom of this UFO. Well, it's really a chariot. But I'm using terms that people can understand. So fire emits out of the bottom of it. And sometimes it appears as a beam of light. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Daniel 7 and 10. Yep, here it is. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were open. <coughs> so that judgment is going to go against Esau, Edom, and the other nations following him. And the judgment is going to go for or on the behalf of the Israelites. And that judgment and destruction is going to start in America. <clears throat> Lady Liberty, <clears throat> also called the daughter of Babylon, also known as what? Egypt or Assyria. Why? Because it's associated with bondage and oppression. Let's go to Nahum 3 and 1. Woe to the bloody city. 
It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. That's the military and police forces. That's being oppressive. <clears throat> but here's the judgment coming. Nahum 3 and 10. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. <clears throat> Nahum 3 and 10. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men. And all her great men were bound in chains. So upon the conclusion of the nuclear destruction, the nobles, the great men, are going to be taken into captivity, bound in chains. That's what this is describing. The fall of the great men, the nobles, the international bankers, the global elites, and the national leaders. Verse 19. Nahum 3 and 19. There is no healing of thy bruise, Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom have not thy wickedness passed continually? So America has rude and wickedness. It's Nineveh, Babylon, the daughter of Babylon. It's Egypt, Assyria. That's why in Revelation 17, it's called what? The great whore. Because it rules with wickedness and is in bed with the other nations around the world and allows all the ancient pagan wicked worships of idolatry, Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Christianity under a false doctrine, Islam. So this place is called the great whore according to Revelation 17. 17, the whore that sitteth upon many waters. <clears throat> so let's go into the final judgment where the elect men are going to be raised up as great warriors, as mighty men through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's going to come after the great judgment by thermal destruction and fire. So let's close out here, the book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. That new song is going to be victory, salvation, and deliverance. First, you have to come to this truth. And that's going to culminate in deliverance and salvation, victory and glory. <clears throat> Verse 2, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Why? Because deliverance and salvation is going to come through our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly call Jesus. Verse Psalms 149 and 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meat with salvation. <clears throat> Psalms 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And this is coming. And this is going to be a literal sword. And I wouldn't doubt that it 
will be a fiery, flaming sword because the elect men are going to be raised up with extraterrestrial, supernatural strength. As in the days of old, the mighty men of Valor, like Samson, King David, and the mighty men from the days of old. <clears throat> Psalms 149 and 6. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What are the elect men are going to be raised up to do with that sword? Verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, just like we read in Nahum 3 and 10. The international bankers are going to go into captivity. But most of the Edomites are going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction, followed by laser and chariot fire coming by the so-called UFOs. And the remnant, the international global elites, are going to be bound in chains by great mighty men that's going to be raised up in that final day. <clears throat> Verse 8, Psalms 149 and 8, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekach And the title of this lesson has been what is the Voronet? See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babal. Shalom.